What's up, fellow lords of gaming, and welcome back to the channel. We're jumping in with some more solo leveling rise content. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the solo leveling update and the dev note that was released in response to the survey that we all did and <laughs> the um, the response back to the new workshop of brilliant light content. It's one of those things that I like to point out, uh, especially with developers when they teams are, you know, on top of things. Uh, speaking, of, it's it comes at a very interesting time when we when you know you guys seen my Marvel Future Fight videos with the Fantastic Four update and them trying to charge us forty dollars for content that you know just doesn't make sense. By the way, you know for forty dollars right now you could uh, go over to Steam and you can purchase Elden Ring uh, DLC, um, which is huge, almost as large as the game, the original game itself for $40. So keep that in mind when we talk about those. I, I hate bad takes and those are terrible takes that what we got in Marvel Future Fighters. But none, none of us, let's, let's jump into Soul Leveling Arise. So I want to start out with the dev developer's note because I think the developer's note kind of sets the tone overall for everything that was talked about and how well this team is engaging with the community of players that are, you know, invested in the content. So here we go. So uh, this is the dev note, which was the second half of the 2024 roadmap, which is nice because they're telling us exactly where they plan on going. And this to me is actually planned content. Like we can see, you know, they're in the maturation of the game and in the process of developing things and telling us this is what we're going to develop. And it's not we're going to develop this annually. This is we're going to develop this, you know, now this is what's coming. So here we go. The workshop of the brilliant light. It was released with inside the update. And guys, that content was hard. It is it. It is ridiculously hard. And especially where you only get to run it. So so, so many limited times. It's yeah, it, it, they, they recognize, hey, look, um, you know, it's difficult. So they, they, they they're planning to improve the uh, blessings that you're able to obtain uh, from completing the, the lower stages. So that way you can basically play. And I think this is a good way of tackling the bosses. Like, unfortunately, I do believe like some of the content just like far outpaces where, you know, even your free to play and even some of your whales, like I've seen some whales having hard times with uh, completing the workshop of brilliant light. And that's, and it's not even a matter of skill It's a matter of like, this is just beyond difficult in terms of like where my character can currently sit and you know, the things. So they basically are going to improve the, the, the blessings that's inside there. They're also going to improve the, the, uh, the light rewards. So unlike all core missions and in instance, dungeons contents, our hunters are able to participate, to participate daily. The workshop of brilliant light can be participated in just twice a week. We've confirmed feedback uh, regarding the insufficient number of rewards needed to grow Sun Jin Wu and hunters compared to the high difficulty of battle uh, balance requirements. Like guys, m my team, my main team of Sun, Cha, Alicia, and Seo are literally at probably 350,000 power, uh, 300 combat power. And it's difficult. And even getting better items through encore or instant dungeons in this in this game has been difficult because you're looking for a delicate balance of what the characters need in order to uh grow in strength and it, it's really hard so like for instance let me show you guys what i'm talking about here specifically so i've, I've been playing this game pretty loyally since uh since its release and so for instance cha is the perfect example so i've got these other gear sets and these are the gear pieces that i have on her that like hey it's it's worth me leveling these gear pieces up to 20 and you can see here like these two purple pieces are pretty decent i got nice drops on them but if i was to go look at all the per the drops for instance and just my shoes uh here you, you notice the stats they don't align here so like she's not going to receive the bonus and benefit from me leveling that gear piece up because it's not hitting those stats that she has and i could go down you know to all of the pieces that i've gotten and i've gotten you know i've i've been fairly religious about utilizing this content and it, it it's just one of those things where it's like hey 
even though it tells you that this is going to be really good for her it's not because you can see she it's crit hit rate crit uh crit hit damage and the attack percentages she's not going to benefit from those things if i if, even if i level them up and put them on her so it's really hard to level the characters up past a certain point when that's what you're battling inside of the system so it's something that i'm happy that they recognize and that they're going to try to improve um because it, it really does the workshop of brilliant light is a weekly content renewed every wednesday we will apply improvements with a detailed notice upcoming on the upcoming renewal date which is 6 26 wednesday so here you go somebody that that this was just released this week the people have complained about it they have said that there's problems with it and they are already enacting there's no month-long wait and yes, I'm going to probably spend a lot of time pinging Marvel Future Fight and specifically some of the responses from that team over there to some of our complaints in that game by by utilizing this. This is an immediate response. You know what I mean? So then they talk about events that they have coming up. So they're, you, hey, this is what we, 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 we're messed up on this, but we're going to try to align on these things. So here we go. The 50 day event spoiler. It's been almost 50 days since our global launch on May 8th. Looking back on the past 50 days, it may have been a short time, but has been filled with both joy and disappointment alongside our hunters. We are excited to unveil a sneak peek of the Seo Ji Woo costume, which recently topped our popularity polls in a survey. You can obtain Seo Ji Woo, co Seo Ji Woo costume through a check-in event. Please stay tuned for various other events we have prepared for the upcoming 50th day event. So you get the costume right here, and this is just going to be like, you know, I think a lot of players is going to just... This, you know, that 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 waifu uh, sale is going to be pretty excited about this. I call this like BDO summer days kind of uniform. It's a very good like it's going to be a very good looking uniform for. Her. And the fact that it's going to be uh, inside a check in event, which is going to be even more awesome, I think. So and these are just cosmetics, you know, like cosmetically pleasing items that the that they are selling in the shop or whatever. It goes back to one of those things, like I said, inside Marvel Future Fight, people will pay for content if, you know, they're at available means and you you're just saying like I want this and it doesn't have to be about you know these costumes having content dropped on them so like for instance I purchased this costume for um uh for Malin Fisher and I purchased it mainly because it just reminded me of it wasn't like a waifu thing I'm not really into furries and anything like that but I liked it so that way when I'm using the character um she basically has the benefit of this isn't the costume what am i what, what am i talking about here like that's the wrong that's the wrong costume oh my god let me go back into these hunters where, where are we at basic i think it is yeah here we go i don't know why i wasn't equipped so i purchased this costume for her because it reminded me of zatanna and i was like i like this better um at least this look than i do you know this look and it but but this costume came with something else inside the game that was available to me it was you know the costume does nothing it doesn't add anything to the game but it was just an appealing thing to me and in the course of like enjoying the state of the game and what they have i'm like well i'm willing to spend this amount of money for this different look it it it, it doesn't have to be where you laid in stats onto those things if you're doing things right so i like the idea of them giving a costume for the check-in event um, really, really cool idea there. Um, they also are talking about the Hunter Archive re revamp. So the Hunter Archive is a feature where you can enjoy the original stories of hunters using keys. However, the keys are no longer useful once you have played through all the stories. This is 100% true. So like we had this branch of time between, um, between Alicia and between Mylan being, Mylan, Mylan being released and I just stacked up keys and unfortunately like the, the keys went to waste because I'm only allowed to have three keys. Um, so they're preparing to expand the stories to provide additional content about the hunters, which is another great thing because this is going to be something that basically grows the world of solo leveling arise, which is what they're uh, basically doing. This will be indicated in a hunter archive. We will also add special stages where you can farm resources, more detailed information will be provided in future update notice. So we've got an idea of what they're going to do to improve things that we are specifically talking about right now. So there's great community relationship with the developers inside this regard, and we're getting instantaneous action. The introduction, the introduction of the mileage system for Battlefield of Chaos, our game features several daily content activities. Most of those are just encore missions, instance dungeons, the power of destruction, and then the Battlefield of Chaos was, reached, was recently added. 
inside the game. And this was centered around their gym system. Since this update, we received numerous suggestions for improvements. Some of them they've already made. Like I didn't want to have to repeat three attempts of this every single time I paid. And they basically up, 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 upgraded the multiplayer system so I can run four at once. So they upgrade the multiplayer system as they did for initial improvement. However, we noticed that Battlefield Chaos still needs appeal compared to other daily content. It's because once you get the gems, the rewards basically, the, the reward rate on like your tier three gems and stuff like that sort of lose value. And I think you're going to have even more loss of value once people get tier three gems that can replace those. So it's like, um, let me show you guys on screen here what it is. So like, if I come over here to the Battlefield of Chaos, the mode is inside of here and I basically get to play this, but I only get to play like certain waves and there's going to be obviously more beneficial stats in the game than there are others. So I'm going to play those days, those, uh, those uh, arenas more than anything. But when I start to look at the gym system, which is what these are meant to support, well, at some point you're going to run the run the, the the whole gauntlet on these right now. Right. So, like, for instance, you can see here with um, HP value, I've been able to equip HP gems on just about all of these inside of here. And so my, you know, uh, how do you say this? my without having additional HP gems at some point, you're going to this content is going to lose steam and lose value because there's not going to be a whole lot centered around um, needing to grow this more unless they continue to introduce more gems and more gems, which can just clutter the system. The drop rates on these aren't necessarily that great. And, you know, like it's a it's a good game mode, but it's not necessarily like the thing that's going to kind of keep players coming back. That's, that's that's what I think they're getting at. So to address this, they're planning to introduce a system where additional rewards can be attained based on the number of plays through the first update of July. So when that's July is right around the corner, we're talking about two weeks away and they're going to be making improvements on this, on the system chaos mode. The Battlefield of Trials Challenge Mode, one of the main drawbacks of the Challenge Mode in Battlefield Trials and other content is the difficulty or level barriers that can make progression challenging. We are developing seasonal content to provide a sense of accomplishment with rewards for each stage. Please look forward to this upcoming feature. What I think they're talking about here is the scaling. So like um, if you were to go inside of like Battlefield of Trials and you essentially go through this content, it, the, 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 the scale jumps significantly at certain points and the content, it's not necessarily just the combat power that you have there. You'd have to play through some of the game, but like <laughs> you see the combat power here all the way at the end for Battlefield Trials. What you're like looking at in some of this too is what they've injected in the game. They do a lot of this floor is lava the dot type effects that are taking effect for you on the stage that make the content more difficult to play it's like um getting to stage 18 of um of the story uh, like so i was playing stage 18 of the story and you get all the way here to the to the last clash and it tells you 345,000 power, which I'm totally at 345,000 power, but they introduce like six or seven monsters that are coming at me in wave that are all like level, you know, 60 something, you know, level with their bars. And, and you want me to clear all of these in two to three minutes. The artificial ramp up in difficulty through, um, it's not realized in the game is essentially like you get to these points where it's like what they've introduced to be at that level just yeah it, it's it's not there guys so i think they're doing the same thing with the battlefield of trials the challenge mode um but yeah we'll see so then we have the grand summer festival in a previous developer note we mentioned the grand summer festival we would like to disclose more information about the content and events that you enjoy exclusively during the grand summer festival this is great so they've got beach the sweltering heat and scorch sun have driven the hunters second raid team to their first vacation at the beach what delightful Experience await them on their summer vacation. Meanwhile, Alicia, Emma, escaping the heat on a French beach, stumble upon a mysterious glass bottle. What can be inside? Stay tuned to find out their story. The Grand Summer Festival will feature an event story along with various content promising to bring fresh, refreshing joy to all hunters. Please look forward to it. This is amazing because this is basically them giving us more story content, 
uh, that's within realm. This is something that like other games could mimic where they can be like, hey, look, we're going to build on the world and we're going to make these intrinsic stories to just these characters, um, you know, and we're going to say that this is just an insulated thing. It's not canon like event or anything, but it's helping build out the world in terms of what we have inside of our game. And it brings us refreshing content that's maybe for a limited time and have limited time rewards like outfits and stuff. So you can see here, like this is not an outfit that we've seen in the game thus far. So they're also doing updates to the shadows. So Cerberus is now going to become a shadow. So we int they introduced the shadow tusk um, from the almighty Cargolin, uh battle. So at once you complete the uh, stage 18, he's available for unlock. And tusk is a shadow that increases the entire team's core attack damage, which is great, especially for like uh, Alicia and for... Um, for the Mylan basically being released. Serbi scheduled to be updated as his new shadow that did not appear in the original work. So yes, Cerberus was not a shadow inside the game. It is similar to Baruka, whom we can meet in the game, but Sunjin Wu failed to extract in the original story. Yes, so if you didn't read the, the, the story, Baruka is a character. This is the Blade Dancer shadow, um, the Ice uh, Prince. And um, yeah, Sunjin Wu wasn't able to extract that character. Like other shadows, Cerberi will progress, uh, will progressively upgrade its appearance as it grows. So you can see the colors basically changing and upgrading. Uh, for those who have enjoyed performing dazzling combo plays with original hunters, not seen in the original work, we hope you will enjoy summoning original shadows and leading the battlefield as the monarch of shadows. Although still in development stage, we plan to introduce Kaecilian, or Kaisel, ridden by the Monarch of White Flames, Baron, as a shadow in a future update. Now, this is really weird that they did this because I think for some players that um, that haven't read the Manwa, you're starting to get into spoiler territory. Um, so I highly suggest if you guys are playing this game, you need to go and read the damn Manwa. It's not that long. It won't take you that long. There's a number of places you can read it um because the information is there so like kaisel doesn't come until way later in the storyline um and i do mean later so it's kind of weird that they introduced this right now but yep 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 he's he's coming and this looks absolutely amazing i'm dying to see how that's going to translate into the on-screen play because he is quite a large dragon i mean like when sun has the ability to ride him Sun looks like a speck amongst his back. So uh, this will be interesting. We are planning to improve the results of special summons as well. So we receive feedback that the monthly opportunities provided by special summons can sometimes result in unfavorable experiences for hunters. We empathize with your concerns and we will add newly joined hunters from Gate Raid and Sunjin weapons since the global launch to the special summon list. Furthermore, we aim to improve the system so that hunters can secure two or more SSR rewards on special summons results. We strive to present it. So essentially what this is, is the, um, so if you buy the hunter association thing, you basically get a free ticket for month. So they basically have this special summons in here where it basically rolls twice a month. So every like 10 days, basically. And you, if you get the special summon ticket up here, if you are part of the, sus uh, the subscription, you can use those. Otherwise, you basically have to purchase a special summons ticket, which is about $21.99. So that way you can then get this special summons. The problem with it, though, that I found is that you get like 30 chances to basically summon if you have the Hunters Association special. If you don't, I think it's 15. But the problem is, is that the rewards that are laid out in here don't like i don't have the ability to get any of the custom uh the excuse me the limited rate up characters nor nor was like for instance scotty included inside this rate up so you can see here these were the characters that were the stuff that was in here you notice scotty's not in here you notice like some of the other characters are also not in here and this never felt like it was really special because it just feels like another extension of the custom draw with the ability that you know you can pull 15 times and maybe the rate ups were a little bit higher so i it, it, i'm happy that they're looking at this because it was a chief complaint and players um you know 30 days in players are basically like hey we, this needs to feel more special so there so then we follow on with the second half of 2024 roadmap our team has been diligently working to bring you exciting content um, the, the, the grand summer festival comes to end. You can look forward to the global launch 100th day update and the arise festival. 
In the September update, prepare for the arrival of Baron, the Demon King. So this is going to be really cool because they've already given us this road roadmap towards Baron being released in September. So you know that, like, for instance, the, uh, the Workshop of Brilliant Light is a holdover so that way we can get to the Baron, the Demon King. There have been some leaks about what the power level requirements will be for that kind of content, and it has concerned players. Uh, because it was looking at like, you know, combat power needing to be almost in the millions. And we don't have content right now that are going to basically get characters and hunters so we can have a combat power rating of a million. I just I don't see it as possible. But, you know, uh, and I think other people share that concern. So additionally, we're preparing the debut of original hunters, which many of you have been eagerly anticipating. How would you feel about the appearance of Japan's S rank hunter Goto Ryuji? who joined the Jeju Island Raid, the Jeju Island Raid, or South Korea's Hunter Association leader, Gogun Hee. I'm really excited about Gogun Hee, maybe not Goto Ryuji, um, but I would like to see, um, I know most people are really excited about Andre, Thomas Andre basically joining. So there, like I said, guys, you guys need to go read the damn manual. Uh, it's very popular. There are a number of places you can read it. Um, and you need to go read it because the game is go the, the game is going to spoil things for you. It is throwing the story at you full steam ahead and is giving you preparation for these. So go read the man manual. Other hunters who topped the popularity polls in a survey are also under development. <laughs> this gotta be Thomas Andre because we all want him. Furthermore, we are planning seasonal events through the year to ensure you have a thrilling action-packed experience. In December, we are particularly excited about the update featuring Jeju Island and the appearance of Shadow Baru. I am anticipating Shadow Baru with Oh man, I am I am I am waiting. If I had no reason to stick around for this game other than to see Baru basically join the game, like yeah. So here you guys go. So this is essentially the content roadmap for second half of 2024 so let's take a look at what's going on in J july so they have guild max level expansion the hunter exclusive weapon crafting in august you've got the guild boss 100 day celebration we've got september higher floors of the demon castle baron episode max level expansion we've got the boss raid roguelike dungeon max level expansion inside of here and then in december you get the jeju island episode which is going to be absolutely awesome i'm expecting that we're going to get some of this around season two of the anime as well so maybe maybe that that gives us some idea about when the series will release as well maybe who knows um so you can see that roadmap along here with the grand summer festival and then the hundred day festival the season events and so forth so down here you can look at this as well so they've got the new instance dungeon encore missions uh in july that's a big thing because I'm trying to figure out exactly what that is. My anticipation here is that with the um, with the introduction of the Workshop of Brilliant Light, you essentially have a way to obtain level 70 and higher gear. So that the gear that's in that is going to be like 70, 73 um, when it drops up to 80, I believe it is. Well, you don't have that inside the on Encore missions. The gear basically stays there at level 55, but not all players are going to basically be able to have those powers. So you still have to have another way to have gear basically coming in the game. Otherwise, Encore and Dungeons are just going to be like, who the fuck cares about playing that if you just have the Workshop of Brilliant Light? So hopefully that's what that is. So we get the Battlefield of Time Season 3. I love the Battlefield of Time. It's like something done engaging to give you seasonal content i love it the hunter archive special stage um new hunter and uh hunter and weapons so new hunter and weapons are going to basically release in july we've got the new shadow so we know what these are in terms of cerberi because they gave us the idea there we get the battlefield of trials expansion so maybe there's going to be further stages and then here you guys go so august if you need to start saving now then you need to start saving now so we get the s rank hunter Go Gun He, who is the leader of the Hunter Association, is going to be released in August. So just like this gives you an idea. Like if you've been pulling on um if you've been pulling on uh you know uh Mylan and you are concerned about having saved up for some of the popular characters you have, then this might be the time for you to basically start saving. 
Battlefield Time Season 4 in September with the new Shadow in September for uh, Kaislin. This is great. They're also going to release a new Hunter again in September. So you get a new Hunter every month. So I don't need to keep going over that. They're going to further expand the Battlefield to Trials expansion. They're going to add new instance dungeons, Encore missions. And you can see basically a scheduled Battlefield Trials. So they're basically... And then in December, we get the S-Rank Hunter go to... Ryuji, um, he wasn't like necessarily like that big of a staple, but a lot of the hunters don't really feel like a big staple from like, you know, you basically seating them in the man walk because they basically just serve as power bars for, uh, for, for sun to basically eclipse. Um, but I think their designs and stuff like that and it'll be an introduced into the game the way this team is handling introducing those characters and giving them more life than what was there inside the man walk is very interesting. And finally, we get a we get a dev dev code solo dev note fifty for you to claim uh, ten custom draw tickets and a lucky skill three lucky skill rune chests. So make sure that you go and claim that before the twenty fifth. Otherwise, it will go away. So solo dev note fifty. So hey guys. This has been a lot for what they what this dev note has basically talked about. So I don't want to dig too much deeper into some of the other things, specifically looking at like my land and stuff like that. I did prepare videos and then I was like, I need to play this character a little bit more. Um, I'll give you my first impressions right now and just tell you like she's a great support character. And that's just about it for me. Like it's she's a great support character. Um, especially if you have depending on the team that you have so like you know my main team is these three ladies right here she's a really great addition uh for your com uh, completion for your water-based team characters and stuff like that um but that's where it ends for me in terms of like playing the character like i wasn't necessarily like ecstatic about her but um We'll delve into some of that later as we explore that content with other videos. I really just wanted to bring you guys this content um, because I thought it was very interesting that they jumped immediately in here and gave us some of the dev note, um, you know, in response to the survey that we just did. Like that survey went out a week ago. They released a survey a week ago and then they came out with a response for us a, within the same week. We do a survey for Marvel Future Fight and we don't ever fucking see a response to those to those surveys. If we see a response, it'll take a year or something like that. So like, I love this community engagement that we have going on with this relationship that we're building with the dev team. I hope that is sustainable for them. I really hope that is sustainable for them and that they're really gonna be able to continue this out. Um, but at no point in the entire time that I was playing Marvel Future Fight have I ever felt like the community relations between the dev team and the player base was this intrinsic and this right here to be honest with you i'm a, I'm a paying player this just makes me more excited or you know willing to spend money on the game because i know that i'm being hurt i know that like hey i'm saying to them specifically sunjin Wu doesn't feel like the the sunjin Wu from the anime and i know there's got to be some balance but i'm looking for diversity and builds for sunjin Wu so that way you know maybe i can rebuild him and do things on certain stages and they're hearing those things and they're looking to make those kind of things uh improvements so it's really really great for the game overall let me know what you guys think in the comment section below hit that like and subscribe and i hope you guys enjoy some of the other content i'm bringing please hit that like and subscribe it really helps me grow the channel i just got accepted into the nexon creator program for the first descendant so july when that game comes out i'm going to be bringing you content from that as well i've been heavy into destiny and i would love to bring you content about those uh, that game but you know i need you guys to like and subscribe so that way it's worth my time it's worth the effort overall and i'll bring you content as much as possible so thank you guys for all the support for those who have joined the channel um and like the content that's bring for the video until next time guys peace